So now I want to invite Frank Cormier, Instructor and Department Head for Sociology and Criminology, to share more about their department and the wonderful things you can learn there. Frank? Thank you, Heidi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, I'm going to confess that I find this very strange that I can't see any of your faces. I'm looking at the faces of my colleagues and uh, a screen in an office. Um, so I'm here to talk a little bit. Sorry, first, I'm Frank Cormier. I'm the head of the Department of Sociology and Criminology. And what is sociology is a question that I'm asked very often. Um, we're becoming a little bit better known in recent years, but there's still many, many students and, and well, everyone who really haven't heard of it or don't know exactly what it is. And one question I've never heard um, is, what is psychology? Tell me what this psychology is all about. Most people, I think, seem to have a pretty good idea of what psychology is. So I often use that um, to try to compare and contrast a little bit and to try to explain better what, what sociology is. So sociology, from the Latin roots of the word, it's the study of society. So it's a scientific, social scientific approach to studying society and the groups of people that make up society. Now, we are concerned with studying human behavior, human social behavior. Um, many of you might know that psychologists are also uh, concerned with, with human social behavior. The main difference between the two is sort of the, the focus that we take. So whereas psychology takes more of an individual focus. Um, they look at individuals or, or very small groups um, of people. Sociologists look at the larger groups of people in, in society, right up to entire, you know, the, the societies of entire nations, or even the, the global society, if we can say that there is such a thing. So I often summarize it by saying, psychologists, when looking to explain human behavior, they look in here. They look in individual thought processes and brains and all kinds of things like that, Whereas sociologists, we look out, you can't see my hands, but out here. So what are the influences and the things that are coming from our environment, our social environment, that help to determine our behavior and what we do and where we end up in our lives? Um, so rather than an internal individual focus, we take an external group focus. Um, so when we think about our lives, we are rarely alone in the world. Um, and if we think about the ways we behave while we are alone versus how we behave with the different groups that we belong to, we can, we can see the, the social influences on us. Very few of us listen to what our brain says, uh, what it suggests we might do, what we might want to do, what we would like to do, and always immediately follow that impulse. All of those thoughts we have, those impulses, those psychological factors, are then mediated and filtered and constrained to a certain extent by our social environment. So if you, if you think about an average day, you get up in the morning and you might be with your, your family or your roommates or somebody else that you happen to live with. Um, and then in a normal year, you might go off to the university campus and you go to your classes and with your, you're with your fellow students and your friends and you interact with your instructors. Later in the day, you might go to your job. So you go do your shift at some place where you work and you're with your coworkers and you're with customers perhaps if you're in the service industry. Um, after work then you might uh, go out with friends, go out for dinner, go to a club. If you think about all of those places that you go in the course of your day, you're taking your brain and your individual self, you are the same. You're the same person going to all those places. But if you think about it, I bet you will realize that you might behave quite differently depending on which social situation you find yourself in. So that's one very simple way to sort of see the, the power of the social forces that are around us and how our social environment can influence our life, uh, affect our behavior, and all those kinds of things. Um, we like to talk about free will. We're often told um, that humans have free will and we can choose to do whatever we want in our lives and the things that happen to us and where we end up and whether we're successful or not, whether we end up you know, as the Prime Minister of Canada or locked up in jail, that is all up to us, it's all free will. And we do have some amount of free will, but a sociologist will tell you that, um, some might go so far as to say that free will is a, it's, um, it's a fallacy. It's not true that we have this, this free will that some people tell us we do. And 
while we do have some free will, we do have control over our lives to a certain extent, there are many, many powerful social forces that are acting upon us. And that's one of the most fascinating things about sociology is that we learn about those forces and um, we can try to, uh, try to employ them in our lives. You'll see a little quote at the end of this slide from Pierre Bourdieu, who's a, a social theorist, and saying the difficulty is to think in a completely astonished and disconcerted way about things you thought you had always understood. And we often call that seeing the strange and the familiar, because sociology really is the study of the things that we're living every single day of our lives and all the things around us. So they're very familiar to us. But what we have to learn as science, social scientists is to find the, the odd things about that and break out of our, our everyday assumptions. Um, so these are things that we know. We all, we all have families. We all have conversations. We see the laws. We know there's rules we have to follow. We see a government that tells us what to do sometimes, and we don't like some of our government. Um, but we don't necessarily think about them in any great depth. That's what we do in sociology. Now, criminology is just one of the several subfields of sociology. So it's a social science. It's interested in human social behavior, but one very specific kind of human social behavior, which is deviant or specifically criminal behavior. Um, and Edwin Sutherland, an American uh, criminologist working in the United States back in the, the 1940s, actually came up with what I think is one of the best definitions of what criminology is all about. And again, it's looking at crime as a social phenomenon. So we are not detectives. We are not uh, crime scene investigators. We are not profilers. All the things you see on TV, we're not those. Um, I don't think there's any television shows about actual criminologists. So we study the social phenomenon of crime with the focus on, as you can see on the slide, making laws. So we have to think about where our laws come from because the fact is we wouldn't have crime if we didn't have laws. Unless there were rules to be broken, we can never um, have breakers of rules. That was very elegantly put. Um, so we look at where our laws come from. Who gets to make the laws? Why do we have the laws that we have? Which is something a lot of people don't think about. Um, because who makes the law is a very important question. Because what the law looks like can be very, very different depending on who makes the law. The short answer to that question is that's who makes the law and has historically. Not me individually, but people who look like me. Basically, upper middle class, middle aged men are the people who make the laws. And so we have to think about the values and the things that, that different groups of people hold um, and that could be reflected in the laws that they make. Uh, most of our time we spend looking at the breaking of laws, which is where we try to figure out why some people break laws, because then we can try to do something about that, and try to prevent people from breaking laws. Or at worst, they break the law and then we have to figure out what to do. And that's the reacting to the breaking of laws. So those are the main areas of study in criminology, if that's something that you go into. As I said, criminology is, is one of the subfields. There's a lot of interest in it. So we do have separate degrees in criminology, but there's many other subfields because sociology touches on, again, basically every aspect of our lives. So we aging, another very important topic nowadays as our society in North America grows older. We look at the sociology of gender. How does being a certain gender in a given society affect someone's life, their life chances, their employment opportunities, all those kinds of things. Uh, same questions for the sociology of health. Um, where we come from, who we're related to, our socioeconomic status can all be related to how healthy we are. Uh, we study cities um, in urban sociology. We're looking at environmental issues and how human behavior and human groups can affect the environment and the planet that we all live on. We look at political sociology, um, not in as great a depth as the political studies department, who you'll hear from later. But um, again, because these, these do overlap in many different areas. We look at sociology of education, uh, how do universities operate, primary schools, high schools, those kinds of things. And as it says there, the list is virtually endless. Um, our degree programs we offer in sociology, you can see we offer all five of those degrees. In criminology currently, we offer the three-year general major and the four-year honors. Um, we will, in the fairly near future, also be offering the double honors and the advanced major in criminology as well. So you're in your first year, so by the time you get there, those might be available to you as well. Um, these are just some of the common courses. Everybody, if you're in your first year, if you're interested at all in sociology or criminology, um, you would need to take Introduction to Sociology. 
Uh, if you're thinking about the honors program, you might have a look at this critical issues in sociology. There's uh, sociological theoretical foundations for different degrees. You can look all those up. Everyone in their second year normally will take the introduction to research methods. That's where we teach you how do we do the science in, in our particular discipline. So you learn the tools and the methods that we use. Then we have a course just called criminology, which is uh, a second year course, which is the introduction to criminology, which is required for the crim degree. And then criminal justice and corrections, also a second year course, which all um, criminology majors would take. You can see on the slide of a few of the interesting courses we offer. This is only a very small sample, sociology through film. We look at urban life, ethnic relations, religion, the body, media, mental disorders. Under criminology, there are also fascinating things that we look at. People who, who make careers out of being criminals. Um, criminal law and procedure. A lot of our students are very interested in that if they're thinking about going to law school after a, a bachelor's degree. We look at crime and criminology around the globe. We look at victims. Um, the relationship of, of women and crime and social justice and feminist criminology, policing, and of course the criminology research practicum, which is a course that I teach. And that's where we place uh, students out in agencies and they carry out research projects. That's uh, an upper level course. So keep that in mind as well. Um, we talked earlier about the, the universal skills that social sciences can offer and I won't list all of those. I'm going to jump right to the end and talk about uh, a little bit about self-understanding. And self-understanding and social understanding is, is how I would, would characterize those things. And when you can see and identify and analyze and then understand all of the social forces that I talked about before that are influencing you and that can tend to push you and pull you in different directions, when you understand those, you can mitigate the negative effects and you can maximize the positive effects which allows you to uh, <laughs> reach your own ambition. I don't want to make this sound terribly selfish, but it can allow you to sort of use the society you live in to the best effect um, for the things that you want to do. At the same time, it also makes you a better citizen, someone who's better able to contribute to the overall society and to help. So we can help others and we can also help ourselves. And that's one of the most important things I think about what we call the sociological imagination, about looking at society in a, in a unique way. Um, one of the hardest students I have to answer is when students ask me, what kind of a job can I get with a sociology or a criminology degree? And I wish there was just one. I wish there was one job that everybody, that's what you would go in and do. Um, but there's not, and so that's the good news, is that there's, there's virtually unlimited jobs where our graduates find themselves. Um, some go into law enforcement, some go into, uh, mediation. Many end up working for various government departments, whether the provincial or the federal government, doing research, acting as policy analysts, providing services to clients, um, people are involved in foreign service, working with young people, working with older people, working with sick people, um, working with victims of crime, uh, all of those kinds of things. So keep looking, look at all the different career information that the university provides, and you can think more about some of the careers that are open to you. But it's, uh, a degree in sociology opens virtually an unlimited number of doors.